What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got Sony's newest 4K Blu-ray player for 2018, the UBPX700. It retails for $249.99, it supports high-res audio as well as content streaming in 4K. Now let's do a quick unboxing and see what we get. Inside the box, we get the power adapter, remote, batteries, and manuals. You'll notice it's a lot smaller than last year's UBPX800 player and about 5 pounds lighter. On the front of the player are the eject, power button, USB input, and disc tray. There's no LED display, but there is a green power on indicator. Around the rear of the device, you get the power input, LAN connection, two HDMI outputs, one for audio video, and one for audio output only. The remote control is model RMTV B201U. Due to the lighter weight, the power board is no longer inside the player, so you get the larger power adapter. They also did away with the heavy metal beam that was used to reduce disc vibration that was inside the X800 and 1000 models, so it does have a much smaller footprint. Now let's hook this up to the display and go through some settings. Here we have the language selection, the quick start mode which will allow it to be turned on through a network device like an app or home control system. We have a reminder to use a high quality HDMI cable. Now we'll connect to the Wi-Fi. And there's a new firmware update. This process will take around five minutes depending on your network speeds. Now that that's done, let's check out some settings. Here are the accessibility settings. Let's go to the screen settings. I'm using a projector, so I'll pick that one. I'm gonna leave most of these on auto. IP noise reduction for streaming. I'll keep it off so I can see what the stream actually looks like. Screen size settings. Let's go to the audio settings. This is already set up for Atmos and DTSX output, so there's no need to change anything like you had to on the X800. Most of these settings are exactly the same as the prior models, so I'll just let the video run through. And if need be, just pause it if you need to see something. Okay, so now that that's done, let's test out a 4K disc. I'm gonna use my go-to movie, Sully. Now hitting the display button gives you resolution info, audio track information, and bitrate. Video bitrate is also on the bottom as well. Hitting the option button gives you a sync option, and video settings to tweak your image. But I'm just gonna keep it on direct. Let's just give a quick scroll of the other selections here. Now I like to test out this scene because on some other players, LG, there would be some noticeable banding in the sky behind Tom Hanks. Where the color changes from the lighter color to the darker shade, that's where you're gonna notice some color banding. But it looks clean here like it did on the X800, since they do supposedly use the same MediaTek chip. So good job, Sony. Now let's try Netflix. I'm gonna use Daredevil and HDR is supposed to be supported. And as you can see here, it is in 4K and HDR is active. Now let's head over to Amazon. And my go-to is Red Oaks. It's a pretty funny show if you haven't seen it. HDR is supposed to be supported here too. And just like Netflix, it is in 4K with active HDR. Now let's head on over to Vudu. Let's pop on Blade Runner 2049. So as you can see here, we have 4K and Dolby Atmos, so that's a win in my book. But as you can see here, we're only getting 4K and no HDR. That's a bummer because it would have been the only streaming service with Atmos and 4K and HDR. But maybe in the next app update we'll see it. Now for the last one, YouTube. Let's try out Cosmos Laundromat in HDR. And YouTube does indeed stream in 4K with HDR. 
The image looks excellent as well, but there is a ton of banding there. So just a couple of things to note, there is currently no Dolby Vision support out of the box, but there is another Sony Promise firmware update coming maybe spring summertime. Also Wi-Fi only seems to work on the 2GHz band, so you may want to hardwire it for a better streaming experience. Build quality is on par with their lower end Blu-ray player offerings, and nowhere near as premium built like the X800 and 1000ES players. Image quality looked identical to the other 4K players mentioned, so that's a plus. It's a solid player, but price wise I feel it should have been around $150. So that was just a quick look and setup of the player and apps. Things will probably change if you're watching this at a later time from the initial release. Now if you find this video useful, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and let us know if you're picking up this player. I did leave a link below in the description if you want to purchase it. Be sure to check out our social media links as well. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button for more content like this. And we'll see you again in the next one.